go, episode 270, the last episode of the year. Woohoo! Welcome everyone, welcome to Aussie Tech Eds. As I said, episode 270 coming at you on the 29th of December 2011. Yes, sir, Bob. We have two guests. Well, Eric is our normal normal co-host and Aussie. So, hello. First of all, we'll go to Eric. How you doing, Eric? Hello, mate. How you going? And switch to me. Hello. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> How you doing? Um, you had I'm, a, I'm good. Had a good Christmas? Yes, not too bad. I'm, I'm quite relaxed now. And uh, if anyone from a client from work sends me an email or rings me, they'll get a very terse reply. Oh, yes. Same here. If anyone rings me on Christmas or over the thingo. Yep. Terse, terse, terse. And Aussie, anyone been ringing you? How you doing? Hi, everybody. Uh, I've been doing okay. Yep. No, no one's rang me. Oh, that, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's because your uh, Optus ain't working. I was going to say my phone's with Optus, so it probably wouldn't work if you tried anyway. So. You've probably got a thousand messages waiting for you. <laughs> now, everyone, Ozzy has, he's, you're on the Optus um, the cable, Doxus 3 Optus, aren't you? Yes. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. And Most of the time, until, until you need it. Now, yeah, that, that's uh, right. <laughs> in which case, someone at the, at the at the center there just hits the switch and turns me off. <laughs> yeah, and you got a box that has a couple of little lights on it that flashes every now and then. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah. Well, actually, I've got a desk full of boxes. Yes, and, and so what? So what's happened? How long have you had this for? This Opti the Doxus Three with Optus. Oh, six to eight weeks, I suppose. Well, probably six weeks now. Okay, six, and your, and ever Aussie, since. was it? How was your connection prior to this? I oh, just uh, it was it never cut out. It was just slow up up oh, speed. Just slow, right? So if I tried to do anything like this, the thing would stop, and I'd end up. I think last time I was on the show, I was tethered to my mobile phone to make the thing work. So that's right. Yes, yes, I remember that. So yeah. it's pretty rough when you're actually using a three G connection to get better internet than your cable internet. Connection. Yes, uh, yes, yeah, that is pretty sad. So you've been trying yeah. to to uh, fault find yourself, haven't you? Well, someone's got to do it. <laughs> And so, what happens when you when it gets under some sort of load? Then it's uh, yeah, it, it fails. The modem turns off. It's exactly Rebits. like someone turns the switch off or unplugs the cable and then plugs it back in. Modem has mm. to resync itself. Um, so and yeah, just yeah. So you've gone through modem, so no one knows really what's going on. I guess no. You're just you're just no. You're stuck. Anyway. Well, you know, depends on who you talk to. You get a different different thing every time. But I've actually been talking to one of the head techs now, apparently, and I have his mobile number and I can call him and I'll be calling him soon because he was going to send me to the head head tech Ooh. and um, he never called me yet. So we'll just see what happens. See what happens. Yeah, fair, fair enough. And uh, so no troubles with yours, Eric. Yours has been going pretty pretty. Oh, speedy. yeah, mate. 100, 115 down. What can I tell you? 2.5 up. That's all right. That's what. Have you noticed any uh, any lag over Christmas? Like, say, with everyone on holidays, everyone might may be using it and stuff. Oh, a little bit of a lag, you know. It might drop down to, uh, you know, I don't know, seventy. Gee, oh no! I'm really kicking, my, <laughs> kicking myself over that. Well, I, I just, as I was saying to you before, my my Doctor Three, well, as far as we know, is scheduled for week today. Week, yes, indeed. Week today. So we'll see Very how good. we go next week. We are the first show in the new year. Hopefully, we'll be on the Doxus 3. Send them about 2.5 to live stream. And get that into you. All right. Get that into you. Yep. Get that into you. All right. Speaking of uh, get that into you, well done to the Aussie cricket Ooh, team yeah. today. Uh, we won. Woo! We smashed them. We bowled them all out for about 20 runs. So, uh, yeah. Good stuff. So, anyway, so um, every week, join us in the lounge at Aussie Tech Heads at live.thesecrethub.com where you can come in and join the chit-chat. Uh, you can ring us up on Skype, Aussie Tech Heads. Just, you'll have to just join us, you know, add a contact in the Skype, Aussie Tech Heads, and just ring us up. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take your view or review, opinions, and uh, whatever you want to talk about, as long as it's half relevant. <laughs> Keep them short. Uh, yeah, live.thesecrethub.com. Uh, audio only on the Shoutcast system, and instructions will be on the new webpage, probably, hopefully, aiming to get that new webpage at, um, at least most of it up next week. So, yes, that's something to look forward to there. And uh, paper comes out twice a day, paper.aussietechheads.com.au. Articles from all around the world, all around the tech world. And uh, so that's pretty good. That comes into a magazine style. We'll look it on your iPad, iPhone, Android, wherever you want. So that's good. And, um, yeah, good stuff. All right. Now, Eric, did you want to start? 
with a might I well start, start. With, a, with a New Year story now, or whatever you got there. What do you I'm got? Not, this is. Can you hear me? Okay. We can hear you. Yes. Okay. Now, I noticed this story um, just a couple of days ago, and it was written on the 23rd of December. But it's quite a juicy story. Now, I'll read snippets. I'll leave the gentleman's name out and see if you can okay. guess who it is. All right. It's every month this person delivers technology advice to millions of people who download his podcast and tune into his syndicated radio show. He is, as one of his programs builds him, the, question mark, question mark, whose digital savvy was recognised near the dawn of the web with an Emmy Award. But for all his expertise, this person still managed to clumsily boast an explicit Google chat with his lover, exposing the affair he's apparently been carrying on with the of his company. We started hearing gossip about a romance between this person, whose website says he's married, and his hand-picked business partner earlier this month. Now, can anyone guess who I'm talking about? So near the dawn of the web, he's married. Can you give us the, yeah. give us the dot points again? Sorry, please, if you can. So okay, Matt, mar- dot dawn points. Of the, dawn now, I'm of gonna, the web. Before I do that, I'm going to... The dot points are this. I'm going to give you a, a, uh, a file, Mr. Glenn. On your Aussie Glen account, not your Aussie TechEd's account. Okay, there it is. Okay, dot points. Hang on, where'd you send it? <laughs> to your Glen um, Skype account. Okay. You with me? Um, no. You sent it to coming my... across. Oh yes, here it is. Glen. Yes, I've yeah, got it now. It yep, okay. yep, yep, yep. Okay, you can open that if you wish. Dot points are, he delivers a monthly technology advice and he has a radio show on the weekends. Yes. His um, digital savvy was recognised with an Emmy Award at the beginning of the decade. Right. And he's quite big on um, the podcast arena. Right. Can anyone guess who it is? Well, we've had a couple of guesses in the lounge. Oh, well, Milo's... Guess the tech guy, Leo, Leo Laporte. And uh, I'd say there's a couple right. of other guesses floating around. But anyway, let's... Okay, here we go. Earlier this month, he travelled to... He has travelled to Las Vegas with this person and Paris recently. And he, Leo. Look, he uploaded pictures to his Google Plus account indicating he was vacationing at a San Diego resort with this person and her son. Leo has to be. He he's just been in France. Her son. Her yeah, her son. He's Leo's not a her. No. Yeah, her. no. He went with this person and her son. All right. So, oh, so the the woman's son. Yeah. And, okay. Yes. King Leo. Yes. Frosty. King Leo. Yep. Who is it? Shall we have? All a right. Look? It's Leo have... Laporte. Woo-hoo, now, Leo. Google Chat. He left it. He was doing a podcast, and he was and he left the Google Chat open. This is him. This is what it says. I'm not making this stuff up. Me, Laporte, come over. I'm naked in bed, 8.13 a.m. Wow. Good Wait. work. <laughs> right. Then he says again, waiting for you, the door is open. Then she says, I love you, 11.48 a.m. Gee, it took her a while, three and a half hours. <laughs> and, and then he puts, I still smell and taste you oh. at 12.13 p.m. Dear, oh, dear. What's going on? Is it a, is it a G up or what? <laughs> is it is a, a look? I don't know if this is a setup or whether he's doing. The article goes on to say that it doesn't. It wouldn't surprise people if it's just a big yeah, a big um, setup, a big scam that he's put up. He's put up to uh, yeah. because he does he does do things like this. You've heard um, his big blow up on YouTube, haven't you? Uh, which one yes. about? Um, Mike Arrington. Yeah. Oh, there were, no, there was something on a phone or something, and he was someone something about some review or something. He cracked his yeah. with him. <laughs> that was the Mike yeah. Arrington one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, funny, Screw yeah. you, Mike Arrington. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, Laporte. <laughs> Get out of so here. So I don't know if this is a G up. 
Yeah, give it um, a, I'll be calling it. Yeah, you've got a question the the source. The source is Gawker Media, who are notorious for mm. shit like this. Yeah, but but who's to say that 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 insert there that, of the people that can see the video, the insert of the Google chat, like that can be doctored. I don't look. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna come out and say that's not that's fake. I, I wouldn't like. Yeah, look, I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying this is what I saw. Yeah, yeah. And who's Lisa Kent sell anyway? That's the, that's the CEO he hired. Oh, okay, right, right. Yeah. Well, as far as I know, Leo was happily married and so forth and so forth. That's right. Well, as far as we know, correct. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm going to come out on Leo's side there. I like Leo. Fake. Yeah, you know what? Fake. I like Leo too, and I don't like this woman. Mm. I I listen to her, and so every now and again, once a month or something, they have a round table after one of his shows, and they just talk about what's what's doing and, you know, where's Twit going and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And uh, I don't like her. I think she's a bit presumptuous. She's a, she's rough, and you know I just don't I don't I just don't think she's up to it. Does she bark? Not I haven't seen her. <laughs> right. Yeah. So all maybe right. she did it. So why? Has, so that story that's just not getting much 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 air, is it? Because hasn't been getting much air. So yeah. that's what makes me wonder whether or not it's it's it's, it's the um, the full banana or not. Yeah. Oh no, it's probably half peeled. It's probably it's probably um, December Fool's Day or something in Paris. But, um, so I'll I'll send you the link on the, uh, Google. Yeah, I put on, the uh, I put the picture up just before. Is that the one you want? Oh, yeah, no, I'll send you the whole article on Google All right. Chat. All right, so let's uh, let's move on then. Let's move on. I've got a, I've got a story here somewhere where I find me um, find me picture for it. Now this this guy Louis C K. I don't know if you guys have heard of Louis C K. Yeah, he's not funny. English comedian. Oh, I had a look at him a bit today. He was all right. He was all oh, right. Oh, was he? Well, maybe he's got better. <laughs> he was all right. Now, wait, you haven't seen him for a while or or what? I haven't seen him for a while, but I don't find him funny. Oh, yeah. He's on... Uh, I've seen him on, like, the Graham Norton show and stuff like that. And although he's he's obviously tamed down on the show because it's on the telly. But, yeah, look, he, he's, he's decided to go put out a video for free or you buy it for five bucks or whatever you want to donate, just like the Radiohead you know, thing that they did the other couple of years ago. People are, people are, he, he comes out, the reason why he's done this is to, people are willing to pay a reasonable amount of money for DRM free content from a performer that they love, even though it would be a trivial for them to pirate the same content for free, which is very true. Because I know, yep, like, if yep. you could buy something for five bucks, if you're into this guy and you want to buy him for five bucks, why wouldn't you? Why would you go to the hassle of downloading and all this sort of stuff? So anyway, 12 days ago, Louis C.K. decided to skip... This is him here. Hang on, where is he? That'd be him. So just so yep. you can see what we're talking about. Louis C.K. Yep, he yep. decided to skip the distribution, DRM ads, and everything else that goes in the marketing and sale of a video. And he offered the video of his latest performance on his website for five US dollars. It took four days for Louis C.K., to earn two hundred thousand dollars, and and wait for it. He's done a million to date, and another eight days to earn a million dollars, a million. So that's, that's well. A, see, when you when you're funny, you can do shit like this. Mm. Well, I think yeah, I, th- I look. I looked at a couple of things, and I thought they were quite uh, observational humor, funny sort of humor. So all of, um, so Louis has promoted it through various social media channels, Twitter and Reddit. It's hard to say how it would be for someone else. Louis, uh, what's he say? He said, he said, it's hard to uh, see how easy it would be for someone else to duplicate the excess. His experiment proves, however, that people are willing to pay for content if you communicate with them, shed the DRM and keep the price low. Now also, he must be a good guy because he's, he's, he's only keeping 200000 himself. The rest of it. Well, what's he doing with the rest of it? He's giving it to charity and so forth. Different charities. Oh, okay. Yeah, various charities. So he's only kept to well, there you grand. go. Yeah, so he must be all right. So, um, yeah. So look him up on YouTube. He's, uh, he's there somewhere. And, and give him five bucks. Yeah, if you like his stuff, download the video. And, um, yeah, help, help, help a charity. He's only keeping 200. So, yeah, good so stuff. What did he say which charity? Uh, he did. I haven't got him here, though. He did in the, art, in the full article. Which was right. the full article can be found. Oh, I keep losing my mouse tonight. The full article can be found. Where is that? That is on a Sydney Morning Herald. dot com. dot au. smh. dot com. dot au. All right. There you go. Have you ever seen him, Aussie? 
Seen the Louis CK? Nope. That must be. No, sorry, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I had too many screens. I couldn't hit the mute. <laughs> no, no, I haven't seen. No. You've been too close to the Caro over there, mate. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, I've got another story here. ANZ Bank. Now, this, now this, I don't know if you guys have heard of Stratfa. Strat4. Now, Eric, have you heard of these guys? I've never heard of Strat4. No, neither have But I. I did sort of glance at this article, and um, I knew you'd put it in there, so I didn't. Yeah, so now Strat4, now this is apparently, it's like the information that is out there is just quite amazing sometimes, isn't it? Like, you wouldn't think. But anyway, hackers yesterday released on the internet sensitive credit card and personal details of Strat4 customers who subscribe to its security intelligent analysis. Now, the credit cards of uh, Malcolm Turnbull, billionaire businessman, businessman David Smorgan, who were both Strat4 members, were exposed online. So probably not the, not the not the something you'd be wanting to do. Now, what happens? Also, other other casualties include the U.S. Army, U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Air New Zealand, the New Zealand Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, Apple, Google, American Express, Microsoft, Coke, Boeing, and Sony. So, uh, so what? So they got is, the big guns. Yes, yeah, they got the big guns. Now, what is Stratford? Why do why why do uh, people? Subscribe to this. Well, Strat4 uh, is uh, uses human intelligence and other sources combined with powerful analysis based on geopolitics to produce penetrating explanations of world events. The independent, non-ideological content enables users not to only to better understand international events, but also to reduce risks and identify opportunities in every region of the globe. There you go. Yeah, it sounds like a privatised CIA but that don't work for anybody, which is not a bad idea. I think that's where Completely it's sort object, of... Completely objective sort of stuff. Yeah, I think that's actually where it actually sort of like spawned from, something like that. So it's... um. Who what? Where it came from. Like it's, it's, yes, right. Yeah, yes. It's, yeah, they're probably... Yeah, they're, their staff members are probably ex-foreign uh, intelligence um, staff, possibly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But, uh, yeah, so it's probably uh, nothing... You know, if you subscribe to something like this, which I suppose you wouldn't... You wouldn't hold it against anyone subscribing to it in the political arena because you think, well, you've got to keep up to date with everything. So, um, yeah, but anyway, they've had a security risk. So that's no good. Um, what yeah. else? What else? What? Did you have any stories? Eric? I've got one. Yes. I've got one. Apple, iPhone, iPad batteries to last days or even weeks. Here we go. This post was originally on Mashable. Uh, sometime in the future, Apple devices such as the iPhone, iPad, and MacBook might work longer than even ever on a smaller and lighter battery pack. How is this possible? By using hydrogen fuel cells. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office has recently released, um, sorry, recently published two Apple patent applications de de detailing how the fuel cells might power smartphones, laptops, and tablets of the future. So they put a patent in because patent in they're developing a battery that mm. runs on hydrogen fuel cells that will make your laptop go for weeks. Now, I think uh, the sooner the better. Yeah, My well, laptop right. lasts four, four bloody hours, if that. Yeah, so, so with patents, and I don't know if you're a, a big big fountain of knowledge on patents. but so, so Of course I am. <laughs> they've put one in to say that they're developing a hydrogen battery. If someone comes to yep. market with a developed hydrogen battery, do they then secure the the rights to that, or they still can't because someone's had the idea? Before? No, no, because no, they they can still secure the rights to hydrogen batteries as long as they don't copy the process that Apple's um, right. put forward. So Apple says for this battery to work, use hydrogen in this way, and it's going to go through these steps to get to your end result. As long as you don't copy that, mm. you can do what you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but as lot like, but I suppose like you can only like a hydrogen. It's not the hydrogen battery that's patented. It's the no. The, it's the, the process. Patent right. is always the process. Like the car, you know, you put your first gear, this happens. Then you put your foot down on accelerator, and then that happens. Right. So obviously, there's no patents on cars anymore because you know Henry Ford had the first one. I think he only had it for 50 years or even less um, before they could copy anything remotely like his car. Okay, um, right. Even though other people were developing other cars that drove in a different way, um, but yeah, it's the process. It's how it's how it works. It's the internals that you can't copy. Right, right. Um, 
Yeah, here's another. Here's a story here. This is sort of, I suppose, on the similar similar sort of wavelength. If you if you if you want. Now, this guy Noah Kravitz, he worked for a popular mobile phone site, PhoneDog.com. Uh, now, he may, he, what he did is he he was while he was working for this PhoneDog PhoneDog.com, he set up a Twitter account uh, at PhoneDog underscore Noah. And over the period of his employment, he amassed something like 17,000 followers. So anyway, he left the company, uh, whether it be, you know, resigned, sacked, whatever, pushed out the front door, whatever, who knows. But anyway, he's, uh, but Phone Dog is suing him because when he left, he said, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to, I'll just take my Twitter account, blah, blah, blah. And they said, yeah, no dramas. But now it's turned around like eight months later or something. They said, oh, hang on, we're going to sue you. We want that, we want those, we want that account now. Because Phone Dog's arguing that the Twitter following is a customer list and that it is entitled yep. to two dollars forty-five for each one yep. of Noah's followers. All right. So they want? Do they want the account or do they want the money? I would. Do they want the two dollars forty-five per follower, and he can keep the account, or do they just want the account and we'll call it even? Well, I don't know. I think they would like. I don't know. It depends how how broke they are, but I think they want. I think they want the the list back. Oh, so, just, why? Why wouldn't he just give it the the list back? Other than his, other than his, um, his friends, you could just tweet them and say, "I'm now on this account." Well, yeah, that's right. I just so the, the company sued in claiming claiming that despite Mr. Kravitz had changed his Twitter handle, so he changed it from Phone Dog underscore Noah to Noah Kravitz, he still retained ownership of the original seventeen thousand followers, and he and and they deserve to be compensated. So All right, here's a, here's a question for you: Did Noah Kravitz? make any money out of this they were just followers right people are going oh he's got interesting stuff to say i'm going to follow that yes well so he's he's not he's not profiting from this so you so you can't really it'd be very hard to argue that he stole well unless i you know, suppose well, he probably did steal but unknowingly steal these yes. clients so and, you know, he's not he's not benefiting from any of this in any way really but could they could they argue now coming from the point of phone dog could they uh, then argue go along the lines of well He's used our, say, trademark, which is the company yeah. name. In no, no, that's right. They have a good argument. What the, the general rule is, um, when you work for any company, that anything that you do while you're in their employ belongs to them, that intellectual property belongs to them. Yes. And so, following that part, that 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 train of thought, then this list does belong to them, and he should just hand it over. Because that would have been that would have been in his um, employment contract. Well, I don't know because he said that when he when he he said he wasn't instructed to do the Twitter account. He just did it as he was into the technology and everything. He just decided to create it, and he built on it from his own creation. It wasn't a requirement. It wasn't a directive. It was just something that he that he did. And maybe oh, he, did. he took the initiative to benefit the firm. Yeah. And yes, probably by using the the firm's name. Well, yes, he obviously was he meant to use it as a as a as a specific identifiable handle mm. for himself, at which directly linked him to the phone dog, but uh, but yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, I, I would just give it his all back. employment contract would have said very very clearly if he if, if he signed one. If these people are smart, he, they, he should have signed one. Mm. It would have said on there that any intellectual property that you develop for us, regardless of whether we directed to you or not, belongs to us. Mm, yeah. So anyway, the case is believed to be a world first and is likely to set an international precedent in determining whether employees who use social media on behalf of the employers can claim ownership of the social media accounts. Just give it. Well, why would you? Yeah, as you just said, Eric, just just send a message out to everyone. Hey, I've got a new Twitter account. This one's close. Yeah, I'm under I'm under Noah Kravitz. Yeah. I'm not no longer on Phone Dog. I'm yeah. on now. You know. Javon Banana Head, mm. but I'd say look, they're probably they, look, they're probably just scamming for some cash. I, I would imagine, oh. yeah, just scamming. Yeah, you know, because yeah, scam. Look, just give it back. Who cares, right? Yeah, because I know someone right now who is uh, who is leaving one job to go to another job, and they're giving they're not giving required notice until they've gone in and got the database. <laughs> So you well, that's know. that's stealing. That's out and out stealing. Well, it is. It is. But how are they? How are you going to prove it? Uh, no, you can't. You can't prove it unless someone says, "I saw him download the database," or "There it is in his bag." Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. But uh, but it goes on. It goes. That's why companies, you know, you go in and say you're resigning because this person knows that as soon as she says that, or as soon as they say that she, that they've resigned, 
They walk him out the door. Yeah, he's straight out the door. So he's gone. Yeah, he's, that's right. He's out the, yeah, exactly. He's out the back door. Um, but anyway, anyway, that's that's what goes on, and I'm sure it goes on everywhere. All right. You want another one? Yes, please. Australian retailers finally click to online market. IT seems to have finally clicked for Australian retailers after more than a decade of resistance. You believe it? A decade. Big name businesses are scrambling for a share of the country's. $30 billion online market. Now, keep in mind that the department stores in America have been online for nearly 10 years, mm. and most of them, the big ones like uh, Macy's, Blooming De- Blooming- Bloomingdale's, Saks, Nordstrom, do ship overseas to Australia and other places, and they've been doing this for years, um, the online stuff, and only recently in the last one or two years they've been shipping to Australia. Um, and finally, Australia's out of the uh, out of the nineteenth century, mm. and I want to do the same thing. So here we go. A nightmare year for retailers has been the push many needed to explore new selling house new selling avenues online, but investors have remained pessimistic about the sector's outlook. Well, yeah, that's true. Maya was one of the worst performers, um, out leading up to Christmas. But are people, and, but I suppose, yeah, like you, everyone pretty much knows now that JB's online. And they got a fair a fair price shop yep. going. Yep. Uh, what yep. would Maya have to? And that's parody. A lot of it's parody. What do you get in the shop? What do you get online? But I go on JB on Hi Fi saying, oh, "I'll get that from JB," and I'll go mm. online and mm. have a look at what they've got. And if I don't want to order online, I know I can go down there and use it as a. Say, oh, I saw this online. It's this price. It's you know, then to go down and buy it at JB. Yep. Now, um, Aussie, you you go you buy online. Is this true? Unmute. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> We had a bit of a chat through the week, and uh, and uh, you showed me a couple of places to go, and I did buy two things online, and uh, yep. So yeah, eBay, eBay, and uh, what was that? Other? City Software, which was a, a fairly good site. So, yeah, City Software, are good. City yes. Software, okay. Um, uh, yeah, eBay for Logitech stuff is good, um, and in Melbourne, I use a place called CPL for all hardware bits and pieces, which are often cheaper than mm. some of my suppliers. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? And, and, mm. and you've got a source for games as well, PC games? Yes, I do. I'll give you a link. Harvey Norman Island, I think. <laughs> yeah, Harvey Norman. That'd be do the you day. reckon that they actually no. ship out of Ireland, the, the, the games, or do you think they just, just ship them from here anyway? Well, Harvey Norman's saying he was doing it 30% cheaper than his stores do it online, and the place I'll give you is 50% cheaper than his 30% cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so the 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 one that Aussie's on. I hope this this is a legit site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's legit. Yep. Okay, yep. cdkeys.com.au. It doesn't sound legit, does it? But okay, so hopefully it is. Oh. cdkeys.com.au. And yeah, so what what I hear you might be asking is what did I buy? Well, I was having a chat to Aussie, and he's in the games, and he was telling me I was asking him how to map keys on a keyboard, you know, to perform certain functions. And he said, well, why don't you get yourself a gaming keyboard? So what did I get? The G510 or something? Is that what I ended up getting? Uh, I think so. Something like that. I think so. It was either the G15. I think the 510. Yeah. Well, unless you got the one with the colour the color screen, which is the G15, is it? Yeah, no, not that one. I got the one with the, the, the 18G keys, the programmable yeah, keys. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Same, same one I use. It's, um, there we go. Again, um, yeah, so it's a, it it's a gaming keyboard. And... Yeah. So what I want to use it for is because it's got, it's got the, uh, it's got the the program eighteen programmable keys down the side, which I want to use and program to use my video switching software that I use right now. Now it's a, it's a key yeah. it's a it's a, a wired keyboard and look oh and look I think Frosty's in the lounge. He's just got a G five ten. Where'd you get yours from, Frosty? And should I? tell you how much I got mine for. I hope you didn't yeah, get it cheaper. Probably not if you didn't get it from there. <laughs> so there's a, on, I got this particular one off eBay now. Now, Ozzy put me onto the site called, or onto eBay shop called Logitech Store. And uh, Oh, yeah. Hey, Glenn, yes. have you unpacked it yet? No, I haven't got it yet. I ordered it on Christmas. Oh, okay. I ordered it Christmas right, Day Logitech. or something. Yeah. Yeah, logitechshop.com.au. Oh, so that must have a, a domain as well then, not just on eBay. That's Well, well that's their website. Yeah, right. Like if you want drivers and all that sort of stuff, that's where you update them from. But if you have a look at what the price of it will be there. Oh, I reckon it'll be... 69 bucks. <laughs> hey. 
He's, he's said that he got it for 69. I got it for 80. Got a 510, he didn't. <laughs> Aussie's on the wood. <laughs> oh, my God. It is no, terrible. Aussie's just picking a number. That's his favourite number. That's all. Don't, don't believe that. 65 bucks. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, the eBay shop ripped me off. But, oh, my God. But you, um, you go... Look at, now, look at the to, recommended retail. Uh, How can it... Oh, man. They must be getting rid of them or something. This, um, story. Now, I don't, this is what I don't understand. They, it, they, they're suffering in the retail channels. No one's buying anything. Maya have in, are so far invested $9 million in their website, which is about right. Um, with the capacity to sell 250,000 items, which is about right. And they're, I think they're up and running, and I think they're slowly rolling that out. That David Jones expects to launch its new 50,000-item website. Guess when? 2013. <laughs> it's all freaking over by then. God, how stupid is that? Now, now another question. Now, now that I'm... Now that I'm... Now that I'm bit bit blue on that my bloody lap, my keyboard, I could have saved an extra ten. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's only ten bucks. Didn't actually think to look at that site, did we? But how much was the postage, uh, Mister Frosty? Free, free as well. Dollars. Oh, spewing. spewing. They can't. They even come over and plug it in for you. <laughs> <laughs> and they hold your hand and push your your fingers down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's rubbish. But anyway, well, there you go. I've been I've been Trump. Frosty Trump me. But there you go. Logitech. Logitechshop.com.au. Go and have a look there for some Logitech gear. Obviously, really cheap. And yeah. uh, now, also from City Software, what do I get from City Software? Go- Ghost 15. For all my backup and, and imaging needs and requirements. <laughs> so, I didn't there have you a, go. I didn't have a good one. This so. show is proudly sponsored by Logitech Shop. <laughs> oh, I wish. Uh, all right. They must be going on bust. That, that, that's probably right. Now, yeah. now yeah. here's a question. Oh, did, did you have a comment, Aussie? Uh, you get, about you've already put that one in your favourites, uh, have you? Uh, no, I'm just looking at me new webcam here. <laughs> <laughs> C910. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, how much is that? I think I forget how much. Eighty I... bucks. Eighty bucks. Tell you, I'll tell you what's a nice webcam. The Microsoft HD. Beautiful webcam. Yeah, is that the one you're using? Pro- probably incompatible. No, with this one I'm Microsoft. using now is HP HD, and the other one, the Rant Cam, is the Microsoft. Um, oh, aye. nice. Yeah. What's it called? It's the I'll tell you what it is. Microsoft Life Cam Studio HD. There it is. There. That's that one. Now uh, type on that. Now just just keeping on. Oh, there's the Rand Cam. Look at him go. That's the Rand Cam. That's the HD. Beautiful. One oh eight. One eighty p. One oh one oh eighty p. That's good. That's good to oh, see. No. Someone's got two cameras in the building. <laughs> Someone's professional. But, um, well, who would, who, would, who would that be, mate? Wow, well, who's got two Where's cameras? Where's your camera? Uh, I've just got one there and one, and I've got three in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> still still unwrapped? <laughs> one is. One's still in the box that I got last year. <laughs> oh, you're shocking, dude. Oh, Tell be... them how long it took you to unpack your iPad after you were hanging out for it for so long. <laughs> it's not delivered yet. Oh, bastards, I haven't delivered my yeah. package. It's two. It's just two hasn't left Singapore. <laughs> and you get it and sits on your freaking floor for a week. Yeah, that's for two weeks. But, yeah, that, that I, I remember that last year I won a camera at an auction. And it's, I've, I've still <laughs> got it in a box. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Is it any good? Yeah. Or is it obsolete now? Oh, it's obsolete. What's it a, what is it, a Kodak brownie? <laughs> it's, a, it's a little, uh, yeah, box brownie. You've had it that long. It's a box brownie, that's right. <laughs> I've got a box. If you can, I don't know if you can see. Uh, it's probably too small. Yeah, I've got a box brownie at home too. Yeah, they're what? good. Yeah, I can see it. Just behind your head there. There, yeah, yeah, up behind my head. That's it. A little yeah. box brownie up there. But uh, where were we? Where were we with the um, with the online stores? <sighs> that's right. Now, probably apart from software, maybe electronic items. Well, it depends. But if they were available from an Australian online store, do you think? Would you have a preference even for, for still going Australian if it was, even though, it was, say, it was, a say, 10% more, 5% more expensive? Would you buy still buy local or would you still buy from overseas? Not at 5%. Look, I'd buy Australian if it was 10% more mm. expensive because knowing that I'd pay less on postage, I'd probably get it sooner. But unfortunately, it's not... It's that, not ten percent. It's, it's a lot more expensive than that in a lot of cases. Not all cases. 
Yeah, yeah. No, because I'm. I buy my hard drives and RAM from uh, MaxSales.com.au. Uh, the, MaxSales.com right. in the states. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, the hard drives and RAM, you know, SSD drives, for example, they are nearly half the price of what you get them here. Yeah, yeah. Well, so go and look that up in the chat room, boys. So I suppose when you get to that sort of price difference, yes, of course, you, you just, you just, it just doesn't, um, it just doesn't add up. But I know, look, I got, I bought a camera from this mob, and I've got a thing here. Now this is probably a good idea, I suppose. Probably cost them a lot of money, but uh, I bought a microphone, me little blue microphone. Uh, from these B and H, uh, who what, what's their uh, yeah they're in New York yep B and H New York yeah so I just, finally get to see it so just before I oh, mean do you want to see me Mike yeah I couldn't see it before all right yeah it's got a stand that it sits on as well so it's so it's a fair oh, it's hang a on, fair I have size. seen that before I have seen that before yeah it's a fair size one I don't know if you want to if you want one that big or not. Does it have a stand or something that yeah. rolls around on your desk? No, it just uh, Ozzy, do you want a microphone? Yeah. Have a look at... Are you looking for a mic? It's, see that behind me there on the bookcase? That's my moon. Uh, yeah, I see that. Oh, hang on, hang on. Let, let me get Eric's picture. There we go. See that there? Looks like It doesn't look... It looks like something else, but... <laughs> I, I guarantee you it is a mic. <laughs> yeah. That's a blue. That's a blue mic. Well, <laughs> it could be something blue, but um, yeah. So look, they're pretty so good. I'm, I'm, I, if you if you want to buy that off me, I'll sell it to you. And that's USB. That's USB. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's pretty good. good. Yeah, that's got yeah, a nice sound to great. it. It just because it was oh, USB. Really deep, deep sounds. There's settings on it. You can you can put like if you want a condenser mic or you want a room mic. So if you want a uh, podcast mic where you can you, you know it's really deep sound. There's a setting on that, and that does it. It's really nice. It just didn't work for Eric in the in the way that on he, the mixer. In the I just mixer. couldn't put it on the mixer. That's all. Okay. Yeah. But any, anyway, else. but anyway, anyway. Look, this B and H dot com. I bought the mic from him, and lo and behold, in the mail they send me a a paper catalog. Paper catalog. So I thought, yeah. okay. Did you get a Christmas? Did you get a Christmas catalog? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. I got that the other day as well. Yeah, and an, an interesting little thing that they did was on the cover they said. They wanted you to log in and tell us that, that you got the got the catalogue. So I don't know, you know, yeah. that's just something I've never done before. So I logged in and said, Yeah, yeah, I got it. But look, catalogues are always good. You thumb through them, you know, while you just Oh look, they've got some great stuff, mate. They yeah, really do. They do have. And look, the stuff the postage is probably the thing that kills a lot of things. But even though with the but for example, with this blue mic that I I bought last year or this year, early this year, it, I went to the Apple stop shop just across the road and I think it was like two hundred dollars. Uh, the best mm-hmm. I could do online was about, I think, about one hundred and sixty dollars, and so that's all like Australia online or you know around the Australia way. Uh, went to this B and H thing, and it was something like sixty bucks online, and sixty bucks yeah. to post. And I could get it by the end of the week, and it, it arrived within like four days. I kid you not, four yeah. days, and it cost me one hundred and twenty bucks from the other side of the world, and it came faster yeah. and. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cheaper. I've ordered a couple of things from there from my camera. They sell a lot of camera stuff. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Go to bnh.com and look, there's a lot of stuff. There we go. They're good. They're in New York and they're huge. And apparently, apparently, their store takes up two or three floors of uh, you know the biggest Apple store. If you can think of it, maybe uh, probably the size of uh, the Apple store in Sydney. Yeah, right. Right. Massive. Massive. Mm. So anyway, so that so that's that's them guys. Good on us. Oi. There we go. Good on you. Uh, yeah. So look, I don't know. Look, I, I just thought. Look, I bought the keyboard in Australia. I thought. Look, I don't know, things like that. Little things like that where the price difference probably not too much, and the postage would bring it to comparative uh, level. Yep. I thought. Well, why not get it from Australia? Then if something something's wrong, you can always you know send it back without the. That's right. In China. That's true. Yeah. Sorry, Ozzy. It's all made in China. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's all made in the same place, exactly. Mm. I order a lot of stuff from Amazon.com and Amazon.co.uk because they sell more than books now. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's I always should go on there shopping for shit. Yeah. Uh, all right. Actually, I've just, ordered, I've just ordered my second sound card from there. Oh, a creative, yeah. uh, a creative uh, it was a, it's a gaming sound card, so it should be bloody good. And it, it was $180 here. I got it for 60 bucks. That's sixty bucks, including yeah, sixty bucks, including shipping. Yeah. Well, I went and bought two sound cards. I bought two of these little little fellas. 
Why did I buy two? Because they're only 16 bucks each. <laughs> because you're going to go and do fix your freaking mix minus, aren't oh, you? Oh, look, see, Eric's at the stage that he thinks it's my problem. It is. It's your, <laughs> definitely your problem. It can't be. It works for everyone else. But anyway, I'm going to put another... No, no not, not working. Can't hear you. <laughs> you're cutting out. <laughs> I'm going to put another sound card in the PC so I can do a true a true mix minus uh, setup. All right. Yep. Now talking about videos and recordings and all this sort of stuff. Now YouTube have brought out a, or unleashed or unveiled or opened up whatever you want to call it a new service called the Slam. You heard of the Slam? The who? The Slam. Just or just Slam. YouTube dot com forward slash Slam. S L A M. Now, this is what it's doing is it's pitting viral videos against each other, and you've got to pick which one you like the best. Now, you can pick the one you like the best, and if you if you pick the one that other people have picked, well, then you get you get points. So you get you get a multiplier of points and so forth. So if if you're really hip and down with it, and you're picking the most favourites all the time, well, you get more points. If you if you're a loser, well, you get no points. <laughs> So yeah, it's a bit of a game as well, I suppose. So um, YouTube.com forward slash slam. Viral videos are being pitched against each other in a battle for popularity. Um, users' votes will determine where the clip clips end up on a leaderboard. Those taking part are promised points for predicting the crowd favourites, allowing them to see how predictive, how, how good your predictive power is compared to others. So there we go. And there's a little picture of it. So I think there's a few topics. Uh, music, comedy, cute... And, uh, yeah, whatever. So, YouTube.com forward slash slam. slam. Slam that. Oh, you know what they should have? They should have, and I bet you they're going to copy this now. I should patent this. Instead of having like on and you know, with a thumbs up, they should have slam. Yeah. So I want to slam this. Yeah. Like, as in, like, slam dunk. That's a sl- sl- Yes. Slam dunk. It. Yes. Slam. Um, Samsung buys out Sony stake in LCDs. Little, yes. Little quick Sony one. Only $939 million. That'll do. Cash. Cash. Not credit card. Cash. That, oh, good old <laughs> Arthur. Not, did I take MX? How many <laughs> points would you get for that? Oh, you'd, go, you'd get a few flights around the world, wouldn't you? But, uh, yeah, oh, the yeah move, for the rest of your life. The move comes as Sony has been restructuring its TV business, which has been making a loss for the past seven years. Uh, probably because they probably charge too much, maybe. Uh, Samsung, meanwhile, has gone on to become the world's largest maker of TVs and flat screen panels. So there we go. That's good for them. Um, well, so I suppose, what's your preference, uh, Eric? Plasma, LCD? LCD, mate. What about you? Plasma. Aussie? Plasma. Yeah, yeah what, what are plasma you? Plasma for sure. Yeah. I think, look, I've got uh, two plasmas and an LCD in the house, and I think believe that I get a better picture with the plasma. Definitely. Yeah, it depends what you're watching. Yeah, you're right. Plasmas are... TV. Got better, get a black. <laughs> better blacks on the plasma. Yes. Uh, you get better a lot of things on the plasma. I also, oh, come on now. <laughs> Don't be like that. <laughs> Pictures I, move. It's not a picture viewer, you know. Yeah. No, I, you're right. It, it's, the older LCDs were very bad on the, um, on the what you call it, the motion blur. Yeah. Yes. And I think I still, and that's my probably criticism with even the one I've, I've got a sharp, uh, recent model, like like as in three months ago, and oh, it's very good, very good. But every now and then I'll just get a bit of motion blur in extremely fast moving scenes. Uh, it's yeah, probably mate, you should have you should have got a Sony. If you got on a Sony LED backlit LCD, you wouldn't have that problem. Yeah, right. But yeah, it's only in the fast moving scenes, and obviously that's that's when I'm watching my home videos when I'm running around the yard. I'll get a lot of motion blur. But uh, you can't, you know, you can't. Fair enough. Out bad luck. <laughs> All right. Um, speaking of speaking of moving, <laughs> which I don't. moving moving products. Yep. Seven million. Apple and Android devices were registered on Christmas Day. Seven, seven million. Seven million what? The world, over the world. Seven million Android or just, and oh. Apple and yeah. Android devices. Yes, that's that's correct. That's that's a hell that's of a lot. lot. Um, yeah, six point eight. That's a lot. Yeah, on on December twenty five. Did you say was that seven point one? Seven million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On on December twenty five. Yep. Christmas 2010, 
uh, was two point eight million. So it's uh, a, bit a bit of an increase. And of those six point eight million, let's assume half is Android. It's three point four million. And let's assume of that three point four million, uh, three million will go back defective. <laughs> yes, probably. <laughs> but it estimated that two hundred forty-two million apps were downloaded on Christmas Day, and that's a jump of one hundred twenty-five percent over the one hundred eight million daily average yes. during the first twenty days of December. Hmm, there you go. Yeah, there's another figure in here that here we go. More than fifteen million apps were downloaded between 7 and 9 p.m. alone in all across the world. Yeah, right. Yeah. I don't know. What do people do? That's they quite just... a lot. Yeah, yeah. Get a life, people, for God's sake. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, it's just back to our TV. Milo says, what about LEDs? Oh, look, I don't know about big screen LEDs, but I've got a small one here, the monitor for my little Mac Mini. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. The picture is... But, uh, but aren't LEDs just the, the, the technology... It's the backlight. For, yeah, it's the backlight. It's not, yeah, it's not it's an just, actual TV, yeah. is it, Ozzy? No, it's just instead of running the f one's fluorescent tube, the yeah, tubes are on the outside. Right. So, but they, yeah, can the turn the, they can turn it off in, 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 you know, around the screen and so forth. But if you've got like a, a scene with stars on it, like you can see blotches around the stars because it's got to light up that, that particular part of the screen. Right. Um, and the rest of it's black, so... Hmm. I, I stick to a plasma every time. Yeah, but the LEDs. Right. It's for a kid or something that you play games and stuff with, or something that you'd watch, watch the you know the news and that sort of stuff, and it's going all day. Well, an LCD. Yeah, so, you know, right. If you've got a, a proper room which you can darken a little bit, and you want to watch movies and sport like racing. Yeah, you're right about and, that. Yeah, def you know, plasma, plasma in a darkened a room with movies is fantastic. Yeah. Mm. But what about um, the LEDs? Why are they thinner than the LCDs? Because they've been on a diet. <laughs> you got it. It's basically a tube in the in the um, plasma. Yeah, that's right. It's you a big the plasma tube. gas and everything else, and electronics to drive it. And oh, okay. Now, all right, fair enough. All right. Um, now, Aussie, did you have anything that you wanted to say? What did you have up here? You put something in the little. I think Aussie might have an audible pick. Oh, an audible pick. We can do the we can do the audible thing if you go to aussietechheads.com.au and uh, you can click on the audible banner and you can get a free credit. There you go. And uh, free book, free book, sometimes free. two books, depending on the, the price of the book. That's right. And you, yeah, so uh, AussieTechHeads.com, I've got, look, I'll show you the webpage. No, nah, it's not up anymore, but you know how to find it. AussieTechHeads.com.au. And Aussie, did you have a book? Mute. Mute. <laughs> muted. Unmute, Aussie. No, nah, here he goes. No. Nah. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, oh, there Sorry he is. That. There he is. I must have kicked the plug out. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I have been listening to the Steve Jobs autobiography. Oh, yes. yes. indeed. Yes. And hey, how Glenn, have you finished yours yet? Yeah. <laughs> He's don't, got an Android phone. Don't talk oh, that's right. Me. Sorry about that. Move on. Nothing to see here. <laughs> and it's not only a pick, but it's a little bit of advice. What I've been doing, they talk about various different parts of, of sort of history with this sort of, with, you know, what was going on at Apple during, a, you know, the various stages of the book. And what I've been doing is going to, for instance, they talk about, oh, where is it here? They had a, in 1983 a micro, uh, Macintosh software dating game where uh, Bill Gates yes, and yeah, Steve yeah. Jobs yeah. and another bloke who I'm not yeah. sure who he was. Um, um, yeah, the, guy that, um, the guy that invented um, the, uh, so, uh, with the spreadsheet. Okay. Um, anyway, um, they actually have what they talk about on the YouTubes. And yeah, I was doing that too, mate. That's a that's a great great advice. You, you can get, actually relive the history at the same exactly. time. Exactly, and it's so amazing, like just the history of it all, you know. Um, and and the, it's so accurate in the book, the way it's all read and everything else. And you go watch it; it's basically exactly the same as what it, what actually happened. Yeah, yeah the author um, did research this very well. He's quite yeah. a renowned author. Yep. Um, and yeah, like various parts of the book. You know, when they introduced the first ad for the first Macintosh, you can see. Yeah, that's on, that's on there, yep. Yep. Wouldn't uh, it, wouldn't keynotes it... that they talk about um, are all on there. Yeah, the keynotes um, to there, that's right. And all the PC, I'm a Mac, I'm a PC ads, they're all I, on there. I haven't got to that part of it yet. Oh, so. mate, they're funny. They're yeah, really yeah. funny. Well, I've, you know, I've seen them obviously on TV, but I'll, yeah. I'll relive them all as I get to the particular parts of the book. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, and it, it makes it a whole – it's a better thing. I actually also got – um. Pirates of Silicon Valley, that movie. I don't know if you've seen that. Yes, got yeah, that. Um, that's great. That, that full thing's on, on YouTube as well. So mm. I'd seen it before, but I watched it again. Yeah, there you uh, go. 
That's a good one. Now that's I think yeah. also on uh, that's also on uh, Audible. I'm pretty okay. sure. Oh yeah, nice, nice. Uh, yeah, but with that, it's, it's probably you know not too far away. Probably someone with nothing else better to do. They're going and they'll, they'll put that audio book to the the YouTube videos maybe, and then just it's it's. It... Well, that movie is actually on the YouTube as well. The whole movie. No, I mean the Steve Jobs audio book. Like, like put put it put run YouTube videos, and the book in the background. If you know what I mean. Oh yeah, you have to get the rights from Steve yeah. Jobs from uh, Walter Isaacson. Oh I yes, but I mean, but you know, someone with nothing better to do. Hey, I know. Why don't we do it? <laughs> yeah, but you got to get the rights, as you said. I've got, I've got better oh, things to do. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. Nah, don't worry about that. I've got better things <laughs> to do. You perform me on public service. I'm not making any money off it. <laughs> but anyway, speaking of Steve Jobs, this is my last story for the year. For the year. And it's a Steve Jobs story. Just it was continuing on from the from that little audio book thing that we were just talking about. Uh, yes, Steve, Steve Jobs still still getting awards. He's receiving one, he's about to receive, or he has received, it's going to be announced, whatever you want to call it, receiving one of the trustee awards that reorganises outstanding contributions to the industry in a non-performing capacity. He's getting a Grammy. How do you like that? Yep. A, a, Good. Gr- a Grammy. The iPod creator is honoured for his part in devising products and technology that transform the way we consume music, TV, movies and books. Uh, the National Academy of Recording Arts and Science says, said. Look, don't be surprised if he also gets a, um, a sort of lifetime posthumous award for the um, at the Oscars too. Because remember, he's very big behind Pixar. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He, he, he was pretty well in yeah. everything, wasn't he? If any, if just for the people that don't know, he started. He bought Pixar off George Lucas for ten million dollars because George Lucas was going through a divorce. Um, fed something like fifty million. This has been in the book, uh, Steve. Yes, it is. Um, uh, fed. I don't know. I can't remember the exact amount. Fifty million or hundred million bucks of his own money into it, and then sold it to Disney after a few. You know, I'm not going to tell you the whole story because it's mm. quite long. I but in the end, sold yet. it to Disney for three point seven billion dollars. Became the biggest shareholder in Disney as a result and on their board. So, no one can tell me that this bloke didn't transform the movie in this movie business either. Mm. And uh, look, there's another program. I don't know if you saw it, but it was on. I think it was Discovery Channel on Foxtel or the Bio Channel. It was called I Genius, and that was quite interesting. Watch as well. I never saw that. I'll look. I'll have a look for that. Oh, yeah, just one last thing: the 60 Minutes interview with the author, um, Steve, the guy that wrote the book. The 60 Minutes US, 60 Minutes. Um, I think it's CBS. That's that full interview is on YouTube. Yeah, put a link up there so we can. Have a Eric did have a link up. Oh, is that the link you just threw up? Is it? Uh, that link that I just threw up is the one to the Bill Gates, Steve Jobs. Oh, right, Gates. that one. Yeah, yeah there's Steve one there too. Also for the the, the, the interview with Walter Isaacson. Mm. Mm. But yeah, so I which watched. Just came out just before Christmas. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's actually another good one which has a. a uh, a modern, like it was done in 2007, um, where they pull a Lisa apart and have a look inside it and oh, how I it works and that. boot it all up. Oh, that. it's really good. I'll, I'll show you a link to that one too. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, I'll chuck them up in the chat room so the, the loungers can have a bit of a play with those as well. So, um, yeah, so that that's good. That's good. Good on you. All right. Anyone else with anything else to say? No, that's a small story here. Why Windows 8 tablets will surprise everybody. That's the headline. I don't believe it. I think it's going to be garbage. No, I believe that's it. That's all I'm going to say on that matter. I believe it. I believe it. I think it's... Uh, you do believe it? Yep. I think if there's anything that's going to rival the iPod, it'll be a Windows one. I, I honest, I really do. Uh, okay. I, only because you got Windows at home, you got Windows on the, on the road. I think it's just going to go hand in hand. But like, look, I watched the I watched the uh, the ads on the TV with the Samsung Galaxy Tab, and you know the special emphasis on web pages with Flash and all this sort of stuff. But I'm just thinking, yeah, but the oh, look, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there about Android and its workings. No, forget <laughs> Android. Yeah, look, Android. look, I think it's Go my on. ISP. Go on, I tell you. I think I think it's the ISP that gives me most grief. I really do. I sat at home last night with the Android and the iPhone next to each other. And did a speed test on the Wi-Fi. They came back pretty much the same. <laughs> no, they did. They came back pretty much the same. But once you get outside and and relying on the three G, then you, you, I'm in all sorts. I'm in all sorts. But not only that, too, mate. It might be the same Wi-Fi. But to get to the point where you can surf the web on an Android, 
takes you twice as long. It on, but not on Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is okay, but still. No, no, I mean, you know, it's got all the all the dicking around with the with the you know press this button, do this, do that, and then, then it crashes, then it hangs, and the phone rings, and then your phone blows out. You got to restart it. That's well, the problem with Android, not the fact that it's just as fast on a Wi-Fi. Mm. And oh, look, my, my my app of the, the year, because it's the first one I've recommended, <laughs> so it'll be the app of the, the episode and the year, is look, I was at a party on Christmas Day and I thought, okay, I wanted to hear you know the name of a few songs that were playing. So instantly I thought of Shazam, you know. So I downloaded the Shazam, which surprisingly I didn't have because I had to format. That's a great app. Yes, but it doesn't tell you the year the song came out, which we were having a competition of. And it didn't tell you the year. Uh, we were very disappointed. So anyway, Soundhound, exactly the same. Tells you the year, and yes, it's it's, it's just as good. So Soundhound, uh, Soundhound is the app, and it's Windows. I mean Android and um, iOS. So it's good. It's good. You can hum into it as Soundhound. well. Soundhound, okay. That's I'll free. Keep that in mind. Yeah, and it tells you the year of the song, which is what we were wanting. And yeah, so Shazam did. I don't know why, but it didn't. There you go. What sort of what sort of alcoholic games were you playing on the Christmas Day? No, 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 no alcoholic games. We were we were alcoholing, but no no games. We we're just <laughs> we we're just sitting down listening to the radio. You know, at the end of the day, just uh, listen to one of those golden oldie channels. You know, well the songs. Oh, good God! Were you at the nursing home? No, like songs from the eighties and nineties. Oh, right, okay. Not 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 fifties yeah, okay. so or sixties. You were at the nursing home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We all had our frames, little motorized scooters <laughs> zipping around everywhere. Uh, yeah, so anyone have any more things before we go? I'm done. You're done. Aussie, you're done? Um, I could talk quickly about some games I've been playing. If oh, you yes. Want. yes, go on, please, go on. tell me. Um, I'll just make it quick. Battlefield 3 rocks. It's really good. Okay. Um, Diablo 3 beta I'm um, playing at the moment, and it's okay. Um, still has a lot of work to do, so people that are waiting for it, I think it's still going to be a while. Um, Path of Exile beta I'm playing. That one's probably a little bit further along, um, and that's yeah, pretty good. I, I actually like that. And Star Wars The Old Republic I've just started playing the last couple of days, and um, that's going to be a lot of work. It's a big, <laughs> right. big game. Big, right. big game. <laughs> what about, um, did you, were you a Call of Duty type guy? Modern Warfare, that sort of stuff? Yeah, uh, the only one I haven't got is the last one they released. Oh, is that the, the, the one they made the big hoo-ha out of? Yeah, because looking, it's it's just the old one with some more funky stuff on it, and it's sort of like Ford Hold and Liberal and Labor, I think. Yeah, right, and, right. And, and yeah. Battlefield, but I'm so much Battlefield Three. Like, it it is awesome. I just love playing it. So, right. Mm. I'm hopeless at those games. I get shot the minute I walk out the freaking door. <laughs> yeah, same Good. here. Good. <laughs> but look, I was I was talking to Ozzy a couple of weeks ago and. And he, he sent me a few links on the YouTube about it, like actual gameplay of these games. I was just, I was blown away. Fair thinking. I just yeah, it's on. good, good, great graphics, fantastic graphics. Oh, because I, I said to him, I think on a, on more than once, I said, is this actual gameplay or is this like just a promo for the a cartoon for the game? I just thought, oh, this is just. Well, I showed you that gameplay, didn't I? Yes, that's just what I mean. It just blew, it blew me away. It just, it's so. Oh, look, it's, I guess it's come, come so far. Yeah, it has come so far. So realistic. And just the amount of uh, uh, coding and preparation and time, and but just the coding that goes into these things. Well, these are multi million dollar games, you know. It's like. Oh, billion dollar industry. Yeah, mm. well, that's right. I yeah. think, I don't know if chat room might be able to correct me if I'm wrong here. I think on the release of uh, Call of Duty, the last one, they, they made more in a week. Than the than the highest grossing blockbuster yeah, that's right. movie. Yeah, I heard something about that too. Yeah, yeah. I just raked it in. I think they made yeah. five five hundred million bucks in, mm. in in seven days. But like, but these things like they they are so realistic and like it sort of opened my eyes a bit to why people are saying that they're too violent and why they probably should have uh, classifications more more rigid classifications because they are very oh, very realistic. No, what, Come on, Stephen Conroy. We need a classification. We don't have a classification here. So if it is nasty, they just ban it. Right, yes. That's the problem. That's, what, that's and, the problem. And, and They're the going about that, it all wrong. The people that do ban it, us gamers, we know how to get around it. So we get the thing anyway. So Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Now, that's that, the problem. It's like, it's around either, so. You can either have it or you can't have it. Give us an R rating. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's coming. Yeah, that's, that's right. It's coming. Uh, that's right. Now, now, Ozzy, we've got in the, chat, in the lounge here, longest headshot. Who's this frosty? Seven hundred. What's that? Seven hundred. Oh, I'll look up. Six hundred meters. 
No, what's he Hang saying? Hang on, I'll look up. I did see it, but the, it's I know moved what he's too talking fast. About. I know what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, the, the chat. Okay, 700 fast. miles in three days, whatever that is. No, our longest headshot, I think he's is, talking is about. Is Battlefield 3, 600, yeah, over okay. 600 metres? Hey, Frosty. What, what's your kill-loss ratio, buddy? Hey, kill. Frosty, here's a tip for you. In real life, my longest headshot on a rabbit is 450. Wow. Yeah. That's all right. 450 metres. That was a... 450 metres using a 308, um, 308 scope rifle, rifle that was black and, was, and it was had a little engraving on it called the Assassin. Mm, I bet you never saw Long that. Longest shot. I bet you he never, he never saw that coming, eh? That little rabbit. No, he was, mate, I'm, I'm not kidding you. From 450 metres on his site, on the site, all I saw was a puff of fur. Yeah. yeah. It just exploded, poor thing. Yeah, gone. Go on. Had to okay. go because we were we were on a vermin vermin hunt. Oh yes, got to get rid of him. Longest headshot is two seventy six meters. Mind you, I don't use a sniper rifle because I never go sniper. And kill loss ratio is one point two one. So Frosty's got a kill. Is it point seven one? What does that mean? That means he dies a lot. Oh okay. So the higher <laughs> yeah, the higher the ratio, the better. Is that how it works? Well, you want to get more. I reckon more kills than deaths is what I try to do. More. Kills than deaths. Well, you want to and kill more people death. than, yeah. Like, if you've got a thousand kills, you don't want a thousand deaths, if, if you can avoid oh, it. Oh, deaths is when yeah, you die. That means, that means your kill ratio would be zero. If, mm. uh, well, it'd be one. Yeah, one or one. one. Yeah, sorry. One to one. And Milo, yeah. it's like, I, Milo gets killed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so would I. Yeah, I'm oh. the same as you, Milo. I walk out a door... And yeah. you know I'm running away from someone throwing a tomato. Yeah, look, I wouldn't. Ha I wouldn't have to walk out the door. <laughs> I'd be killed from a chandelier dropping on my head or something. Oh, you're you're hiding under the couch. <laughs> That's right. I'll get bit by a snake or something. <laughs> be finished. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. I'd I'm be I won't do it again. <laughs> I'd be. I'd be gone. I think oh. everyone dies a lot when they first start. You just got to keep playing a little bit. And oh, oh it's so stressful. I went. I went on the online gaming. And some of these dudes, you walk out, you poke your head around the corner, and bang, they're so quick. <laughs> they are, aren't they? Well, the message there is don't poke your head out. <laughs> Put your well, foot out. This is it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, next time I'll play, I'll, I'll bring Glenn with me, and I'll push him in front of me. Cannon fodder, that's what you need. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, Put out the noobs right. first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, that's good. It's, it's time to go. Oh, look, we've got some music again as well. All right, so everyone, it's the last show of the year, last show for 2011. Next week we'll be back, which will be Doxus 3 Day, hopefully, <laughs> the 5th of January. Thank you, 2012. So uh, thank to everyone that's ever been um, associated with the show this year. There's a, quite a few of you, and most of them in, in the lounge tonight. Uh, Frosty, Milo, uh, PA, Will, and, and of course, anyone else <laughs> that I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, Brad. And, um, yeah, good stuff. All right. And also a special thanks to Eric and Ozzy. Thanks, guys. Have a happy new year. You too. Thank you. And, Thank um, you, mate. No problems. And we'll see you all same time, same channel next Thursday night. Have a happy new year, everyone. Good night. Don't drink and drive, people. All right, thanks, Lenny.